You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaverdam present Beaverdam High School Golden Beaver Boys Basketball. And tonight it's an early season showdown in the Badger Large Conference. The Milton Redhawks are in town to take on your Beaverdam Golden Beavers. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you inside the field house, and I'm joined on site by my videographer and engineer, Ninja, a.k.a. Justin Wilski. Ember and Toast are also here assisting, and Jack Wilski's back at the 1430 ESPN Studios engineering the radio simulcast. Our game tonight is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game, also a presentation of McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for your home, Summit Ford, Beaverdam Tire and Service and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaverdam, and white construction. Welcome into our pregame show, everyone. Glad you're with us on this Friday evening. Should be an exciting night inside the field house. Beaverdam and Milton set to clash here in about another uh, 15 minutes or so. And uh, just like it was for the girls last evening, it is Little Hoopsters night here at the field house. Uh, this time, the boys from the Positively Hoops third and fourth grade teams are here and uh, during the halftime of the JV game tonight the fourth graders played on the big court and coming up at the halftime of our varsity game the third graders will get a chance to showcase their talents on the big court also there are some eighth grade basketball players here that uh, coach Tim Ladron told me that uh, they get to kind of experience uh, a game night atmosphere as they get to go into the locker room before the game and kind of see the pregame routine and the uh, the uh, talk from the coaches and whatnot. And so uh, just going to be a, a fun night all around for a lot of the youngsters, a lot of the young athletes in our community. But uh, the showcase, of course, is this matchup between Beaverdam and Milton. And both teams are off to excellent starts this season. We talk about Beaverdam. The Golden Beavers come in 4-0 on the year. They're 2-0 in Badger Large Conference play. They haven't played, the Golden Beavers haven't, since last Saturday when they went to Cudahy and got a pretty impressive non-conference win over the Packers, 79-39. to Beaverdam also with wins this season over Madison West, Fort Atkinson, and Watertown. Meanwhile, for Milton, they are 3-1 and on the season. They're also undefeated in the Badger Large at 2-0. and The only loss this season for Milton came in their opener to Janesville Craig, Lost by one, 69-68. Other than that, they've had wins over Oregon, DeForest, and most recently on Tuesday night, Westosha Central. So this is a, as I mentioned, an early season, a big early season matchup with a couple of teams right at the top of the conference. You look at the Badger Large standings coming into tonight. Beaverdam, Milton, and also Monona Grove, all 2-0 in league play entering tonight. Wanakee and Oregon are each one and one. And uh, so this is a huge game early on. I mean, they're all huge in this conference. We've talked about that before. You've got some really talented teams, and you got to bring it every night. But uh, tell you what, this is a big, big early season showdown. Milton, I tell you what, the uh, Milton Redhawks, a name you're going to hear a lot tonight, Aiden Gall. He's averaging almost 30 points a game 
through the first four. 28.3 points a game. The offense goes through him. I mean, there's there's no doubt. Now, as Beaver Dam head coach Tim Ladrin told me, don't let that fool you. Uh, there are other talented players on this Milton roster. Uh, Lane Twist averaging 11.5 points a game. Logan Branch averages 10 points a game. So Aiden Gall certainly not the only player that can light up the scoreboard, but he certainly has been leading the way. This Milton team, what they lack maybe in size, they have made up for in athleticism and quickness. They're lightning quick. They're going to look to get up and down the floor. The Red Hawks are coached by a Beaver Dam alum. Ian Kirst is in his first year as the head coach of the Red Hawks. He is a 2001 graduate of Beaver Dam High School. He played basketball here at Beaver Dam. He played for, uh, I believe, uh, Coach Dan Hallman, and also I think he played one season for uh, head coach Dean Belanti. So uh, that's a name that many of you in the uh, Beaver Dam region may be familiar with from years gone by. Ian Kirst taking over the program. He's not new to this program. He has been with the Milton program for the last 17 years working as an assistant. So the transition, he said, when I talked to him earlier, is gone pretty smooth because uh, he, you know, he already knew these kids. They knew him, and there really wasn't a lot of get to know you. They, they already knew each other. But uh, nice to see Ian Kirst, a Beaver Dam alum, uh, make his head coaching debut in back in the school where he played his high school. But granted, he didn't, we didn't have this field house back when he was in high school, but uh, certainly he played for Beaver Dam back in the day. The Golden Beavers, coached, uh, coached, uh, coached, coached by Tim Ladron, and Tim Ladron in his 16th year now at the helm of the Golden Beavers. Speaking of players that are uh, playing well, how about uh, J.T. Call, senior, averaging 17.8 points per ball game this season. Uh, E.J. Salatel, sophomore, is averaging in double figures 14.3 per ball game. And Beaver Dam, they have uh, they've played really well, as their record would indicate. Uh, Coach Tim Ladron, you'll hear the interview in a moment. He said, we're really, really pleased with the defensive intensity that the team has brought. He says, uh, Coach Ladron admits that they haven't shot the ball as well as they're capable of. Well, but they're still winning games. And a lot of it has to do with the defensive intensity. Offensively, he says, you know, they're, they're, those shots are going to start falling eventually. You just got to keep doing what you're doing. But... Uh, you know, and I commented this uh, in one of the previous broadcasts. I said one of the things I really notice about the Golden Beavers, especially on offense, is they play a very unselfish style. Uh, they've got, you know, a lot of guys that are capable of stepping up on every night, and they do a good job setting each other up, and it's a very unselfish and entertaining style of basketball. So uh, this is going to be a good matchup. Should be a lot of fun as we watch these teams do battle tonight. Right now, we're going to step aside. We're going to take a two-minute break. When we come back, we'll continue our pregame programming. You'll hear some comments from Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam, right after this two-minute break on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. At Summit Ford Beaver Dam, we are committed to serving the customers in our community to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. 
So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And we continue our pregame programming. We're inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson standing by once again with Tim Ladron, head coach of the Golden Beavers. Tim, your uh, team has been off for the last couple of days. Uh, last game was one I didn't see, and that was uh, last weekend, uh, an impressive win at Cudahy. Talk about that game and what you saw from the boys that night. Well, it's a game, you know, that we kind of, well, we expected to win coming in. Um, they're they're very young and very inexperienced. And so we, but I was really happy with our guys that, um, you know, we talked about just playing possession by possession, staying the course and doing the things that we know we're capable of. And, and we did that very well, I thought. And it was a, just showed what type of focus our guys have, uh, fourth game in eight days, um, and one that we expected to go down there and win um, and just and took care of business when we were supposed to. You're undefeated to this point. That's obviously you're happy with that. But mm -hmm. as you look at those first couple of games, what are you most pleased with? What did you see out of the guys that maybe was most pleasing during that stretch? Our defensive effort has been really good, and our rebounding has been really good. And it, it's been two really big focuses for us. Um, you know, our, you know, goal-wise, our game goal-wise, we've been well above our numbers in those areas. Um, and that's been really – I've been really happy with that. Um, and to be honest with you, it's kind of covered some of the – shooting flaws we've had we have not shot the ball very well yet uh, we know it's a real we have a really good shooting team here and you feel like figure like the the numbers will turn at some point well that's I, you just answered my next question you and i have talked a little bit about it and that's the fact that you feel like you haven't really shot the ball that well but you're still winning mm -hmm. so i guess you just answered my question that w the question was going to be is you know, you just keep doing what you're doing and eventually they're going to start falling yeah i think so we get i mean we got really good shooters here. We got guys that can score at all three levels. You know, I it's it just one of those things that kind of you know it ebbs and flows a little bit throughout the season. We're off to a little bit of a slow start from the three point line. Um, you know, we shot free throws well. We're really good percentage from two, so that's kind of covered some of that as well. Tonight, Milton comes in here, and uh, this will be a tough test, uh, no doubt about it. And I know you had a wild game down there at their place last year. You won an overtime. Um, what do you know about this year's version of the Red Hawks? And uh, I, if I said the name Aiden Gall, that probably is going to uh, put, uh, you know, put a light on right away. Yeah, I think Aiden looks like the best player in the conference so far this year. He's been really good. He's averaging nearly 30 points a game, almost double digits in rebounds. Um, he does everything for them. Um, I, that's not fair to what else they have. I mean, right. he's a distributor. You know he's a rebounder, but he can distribute to guys that can that can score, that can move with the ball. They've got a really really nice supporting cast around him. It's a really good basketball team. Um, you know they're they're two and zero in the conference. They're three and one overall. They've beaten a couple really good teams in DeForest and Westosha Central. Um, and you know they're it's a team and, and Oregon, who's a team that was predicted to be near the top of the league as well. And so uh, it's a really good team. Uh, Gall is certainly certainly the head of the monster, but. Um, they've got a lot of other guys that can score. They play super fast. They're athletic. Um, just a, a really, really good basketball team. Yeah, I was going to say that I was talking with uh, one of your assistants. I was talking to Mike Call, and he said that they're super quick, and you got to be ready for that. Yeah, we do. We got to be, you know, and that's going to really test us defensively. Uh, we got to be ready in transition. You know, we've got to be ready for some of the things that they really like to do. Um, you know, and, and so you know, certainly our guys have worked on that all week. Uh, but it's a matter of putting it out on the floor defensively and. Uh, you know, our guys have been really focused. You know, this is this group has been really dialed in, especially when it comes to game prep, scouting reports, things like that. So, uh, but you'd expect that being a veteran group. Uh, but you know, then it comes down to getting it down, getting it done on the floor. Not only is tonight a tough test, but I'm looking at your next couple of games uh, between now and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Tonight it's Milton. You've also in that stretch got Wanaki, DeForest, and a non-conference game at Vincent. Safe to say this is going to be a tough stretch, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, um, you know, we you know, the Watertown game I thought was a tough one. We knew Fort was going to be tough. Uh, you know, when, when back when we scheduled Madison West, they had a couple of guys that transferred out at, since then and yeah. made it a little bit more simple. But um, yeah, there's no question. Just this part of the schedule is really tough. And 
but it, it starts with this one tonight. Um, you know, again, they're they're sitting at two and zero in the league, just like we are, and it makes it a really could put either one of us in a really good spot uh, moving forward. I don't think this conference. I think this conference is so good and so deep this year. I don't think anybody runs the table, um, but it certainly puts you in a good spot. And uh, their new head coach this year is a Beaver Dam grad, uh, Ian Kurse. I know he's been with the program mm -hmm. for quite a while, so I'm sure you've gotten to uh, know him a little bit over the years that you've played them. Yeah, I, you know, I know Ian a little bit. You know, he, he was actually even before I was yeah. coaching here, so uh, it was a long time ago, but I've gotten to know him a little bit. He's a really good guy. I think he's got his kids playing really well. You know, they lost um, a couple of really nice big players last year that really gave us fits. And they are, you know, they're, they're small like we are. And he's got them adapting, you know, just, just like we have to, to lack of size. Uh, they rebound really well. They play fast. They're athletic. And he's done a really good job of them in his first year. And I'm not surprised. Uh, Alex Olson was a good mentor for him. And, and Ian, Ian's got his own little wrinkle to their team. You can see some differences from what it was last year. And, you know, you can tell he's doing a really good job. He's, he's really excited. He's fired up on the sideline. He's got those guys going. And, uh, yeah, it, they're, they're a really tough unit. This is going to be a tough one for us. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a fun Friday night here in the Fieldhouse. Tim, good luck to you and the boys, and thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All right, Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam. We'll step aside. We're back right after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. 15% off the most awarded SUV ever, the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee and Grand Cherokee L at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and this deal is so good, I've got to say it again. 15% off brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees during the Black Friday sales event. That's over $10,000 in savings on select models. This is going to be a Black Friday like no other. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. In today's financial markets, you will find all your needs met at Park Village Shopping Center. Time is right for a home equity line of credit. The folks at Horicon Bank can make those home remodel dreams a reality. Searching for sound financial advice? Kevin Smith of Edward Jones will help you make sense of your investments. Kevin knows the market inside and out. Nightberry Title meets all your title needs, from commercial to residential. The team at Nightberry is your partner for success. This is why you hear people say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center. You should too. Park Village Shopping Center. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. We continue our pregame programming inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson with you on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. It's boys basketball tonight. The Milton Red Hawks and the Beaver Dam Golden Beavers. Beaver Dam at 4-0, Milton at 3-1. And we're going to keep it right here, but we'll pause for the national anthem performed tonight by the Beaver Dam High School Pep Band under the direction of Colin Galitz. Beaverdam High School pep band with our national anthem. Time now for the starting lineups. And first, the starters for Milton. The Red Hawks coached by Beaverdam alum Ian Kirst in his first season at the helm. Sophomore along with Aiden Gall, a 6'2 senior. Logan Branch, a 6'0 senior. And Lane Twist, 6'2 and a senior. Rounding out the starting five for the Red Hawks is Matthew Steinke, 
a 6'3 junior. So again, for Milton, Colin Branch, Aiden Gall, Logan Branch, Lane Twist, and Matt Steinke. Now the starters for Beaver Dam, coached by Tim Ladron. The guards are E.J. Salatel, 6'2 sophomore, J.T. Call, a 6'1 senior, and Parker Stoby, a 5'9 junior. At forward, Jack Jens, 6'3 and a senior, along with Cameron Mendoza, 6'3 senior. Again, for the Golden Beavers, it's E.J. Salatel, J.T. Call, Parker Stoby, Jack Jens, and Cameron Mendoza. Beaverdam in the home white jerseys and shorts tonight with the green numbers and the green and gold trim. Milton wearing black jerseys and shorts, red numbers, and red and white trim. For those of you on radio that can't see it, in the first half, Milton goes left to right, and that means Beaverdam will go right to left across your radio dial. Well, the Beaverdam Unified School District is committed to its strategic plan and actions that result in improved outcomes for students in our community. For more information on the school's success plans at your child's school and the strategic efforts grounded in supporting academic excellence and social emotional fortitude, please visit our website or contact your child's principal. Don't forget, you can send me an email tonight during the broadcast, as uh, you can do every night, sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for, just like you always do. We'll be happy to give you a shout out during the broadcast tonight. My name is Mike Tronson. I'm joined on site by Justin Wilski, AKA Ninja. Ember and Toaster here assisting him. Jack is back at the 1430 ESPN studios, just a couple of blocks away from here, engineering the radio simulcast. And thanks to all the Wilskis for all their great work. And it's an honor to be on the same team with all of you guys. All right, so it's going to be Cameron Mendoza to jump it at center for the Golden Beavers. And Aiden Gall is going to do the honors for Milton. Aiden Gall, 28.3 points a game is what he's averaging through the first four. And uh, this should be, uh, this promises to be a high flying affair here today. We could see a high scoring game. I better get the calculator ready. There's the whistle. Ball's up in the air. Tap controlled by Steinke and Milton. And he gives it to Gall, Aiden Gall into the front court, and here we go as this game is underway. Sent to the left side, high on the left side. With it there is Logan Branch. Now back to Gall. Gall kicking it out to the corner. Now right back to Gall. He was a head and shoulder fake, spins towards the lane, then kicks it back out. Here is Logan Branch sending it right side. Steinke will try a three ball. It's off the rim, no. Rebound out of bounds. I believe Milton's going to keep it, yes, as Jens was unable to secure the defensive rebound. And so Milton will get a reload. They'll inbound on the baseline to my right. We're 28 seconds into the contest. No score as of yet. Steinke gets it up top for Lane Twist on the left side. Back to the top of the silo. Fall away three. No good for Galls. He fell down. Offensive board kept alive by Colin Branch. And now here's his brother Logan. And lost it. Back the other way. Off the steal comes JT Call. He's going to let traffic catch up. Beaverdam's got its first possession of the evening. No score. Not quite one minute in to this contest. Man-to-man D here for Milton. Salatel pushing it to call. Left corner, three balls on the way, too strong. It went right over the rim. Aiden Gall has the rebound. One minute gone, no score. Milton with another possession here. Top of the key for three is Logan Branch. Bullseye! Logan Branch with a triple. And it's 3-0 in favor of the Red Hawks. We're a minute and 12 seconds into the game. This is Parker Stoby. Sending it over to Salatel. Now Cameron Mendoza. Shot up off the rim. No rebound pulled down by Gall. All right, with it is Colin Branch leaving it off now for Logan. Logan Branch to the right corner. Steinke tries a three. Off the rim. No. Rebound and it's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Milton. Colin Branch tried to jump in there and get that rebound. Fighting for it along with uh, Beaverdam's Parker Stoby, and uh, it went off of him and out of bounds, or not, it went off of uh, Branch, I should say. Here's Stoby giving it to EJ, Salatel, high on the right, back to Stoby, bounce pass to Jens along the baseline, he's guarded there pretty closely, trying to spin, puts a hook shot up, he missed it, good defense by Logan Branch, rebound for the Red Hawks, they lead it 3-0, two minutes gone by, here's a shot, one-handed floaters up, and it's in, Aiden Gall, he can do that. 
and he's got his first bucket of the night, 5-0 in favor of Milton. Jens, top of the bubble. One hands it to JT Call. Call bounce pass to Mendoza. Mendoza guarded by Stenke, pass to a cutting Salatel and his shot, no good, but he hits the deck, he got fouled. And he's helped up quickly by his teammate, Parker Stobie. The foul was called on Lane Twist. His first and the team's first. First free throws on the way, no good for E.J. Salatel. E.J. averaging 14.3 a game this season, 63.6% from the free throw line. He scored 18 last Saturday in that win on the road at Cudahy. One more, second one's on the way. It is off the back rim, no. Rebound knocked around, grab, it deflected to Steinke. And he gives it to Logan Branch. Branch lets traffic go by, he'll set something up. They go around the horn, left side, Gall's on the wing. Gall back to Logan Branch between the circles. One hands it back to Colin Branch, now gives it to Twist. Twist takes a few dribbles, sends it left side. Here's a baseline drive and then kicked out of there by Branch and they go back up top for Gall. He'll try a three, it is short. And the rebound for Stobie. Parker Stobie ahead. Finds Mendoza. Now here's JT Call. He's going to back up a little bit. Beaverdam's trying to get on the board. We're three minutes into the contest. It's 5 0 in favor of Milton. Call now working the left baseline. Floater got it. And they're on the board. With 14.52 to go in the first half. 5 to 2 now. One possession game. Milton with possession and a three point advantage. Red Hawks send it to Logan Branch. Bounce pass right side. Inside the bubble is Gall spinning towards the block. Double team kicks it out. Here's a deep three in the left side. It is high off the rim. No good for Logan Branch. But an offensive board for Steinke. Logan will try again. And he got it that time. Logan Branch with his second triple. He fell down after making that shot. Eight to two as it's a six-point lead for Milton. Nice give and go. Stobie to the left corner, Salatel, rainbow three. It's off the iron, no good. And jumping in for the defensive rebound is Lane Twist. Back the other way comes Milton with a six-point lead. Just uh, over four minutes gone by in the first half. Steinke, top of the key for three. It's off the back rim, no. Goal, the offensive rebound. He's double teamed to the baseline, fights through it. Up and under, shot, counted, and one. Aiden Goal with a hoop and the harm. And he's got a chance for a three-point play, but we've got a timeout called. Timeout on the floor called by Beaverdam with 13.48 left in the first half, and it is a 30-second timeout, so we're going to keep it right here with Milton right now on top, 10-2. to E.J. Salatel, by the way, picked up that foul, and when we come back out of the timeout, Aiden Gall will be at the free throw line. We've got more basketball action coming your way next week, and... Speaking of the uh, Beaverdam boys basketball team, next Tuesday night, the Beaverdam boys will be at Wanakee for another Badger Large Conference matchup. We'll have that game for you Tuesday night on radio only, 1430 ESPN Beaverdam. Coverage starting at 7 o'clock, 7.15 for the tip. I'll be in Wanakee for that one. So if you're planning ahead, Beaverdam at Wanakee next Tuesday night. But long way to go in this one. And Aiden Gall's got to try and complete that three-point play. It's up, and the free throw is good. Aiden Gall, 60.9% from the free throw line. Five points already for him. And it's 11-2, so a nine-point advantage for Milton. 13-39 to go, first half. Jens fakes a three right corner into the lane. And cross-court pass was tipped but saved by Call. Now JT being guarded there by Logan Branch, driving into the lane. Got tripped up. Look out as both he and the defender hit the deck. And after all of that, JT Call with an all-expenses-paid trip to the free-throw line. 13-29 left in the first half. Milton by 9, 11-2. Foul was the uh, second personal on Twist. And here's JT to shoot a pair, first one, no good off the back iron. JT averaging 17.8 points per ball game. He's around 66% from the free throw line. 
Just under eight rebounds and four assists per game for the senior, JT Call. Another one on the way. It is good. So he gets one of two. 11 to three, still an eight point lead for the Red Hawks. 13, 22 and counting left in the opening stanza. This is Logan Branch, pass to the left side, sent out of there by Aiden Gall, right back to Branch. He draws the attention of two defenders, bounce pass to the right side, they go to Colin Branch. Now he draws a double team on the near sideline, lob cross court to his brother, Logan, to the left side, Gall driving baseline, floats it up, it's off the rim, no, Call grabs the defensive rebound, and he's back the other way. As JT, hesitation move, he's going to go left baseline, whips it out, Right elbow for three, Salatel, yes! E.J. Salatel from downtown Beaver Dam. It's 11 to six as the Golden Beavers cut the deficit down to five, 12.35 and counting, left until halftime. There's a kicked ball inadvertently. Milton is gonna keep possession. They'll have to inbound over on the far sideline right in front of the Golden Beaver bench. And this is Colin Branch. Colin Branch, double team, bounce pass. Gall has it high on the right. Alley-oop pass, and that one intended for Logan Branch, who was cutting towards the basket on the left baseline, but it went off his fingertips and out of bounds, so that's a turnover, and it'll be Beaver Dam basketball, but Milton still with the lead, 11-6, to and we have 12 minutes and 15 seconds to go until halftime. There's a tip ball, but saved by Beaver Dam's Parker Blank, who had just checked in. He's going to drive, missed the shot, Offensive board put back, and that's going to go for Cameron Mendoza was there to get the miss and the put back. 11-8, back to a three-point game. Everdam was down 11-2 just a moment ago. Now a little 6-0 run to get right back in it. 11.49 left in the first half clock running. Logan Branch over to Gall on the bounce pass, near side, back the other way. Pump fake, now they send it towards the free throw line, back out. And they lob it to Gall, right side, he goes down low. There's a shot up by Steinke, it's off the rim, no good. Rebound for Beaver Dam. Braden Hill, a 6'2 junior, is out there on the floor now for Milton. I mentioned that uh, Parker Blank had checked in for Beaver Dam, the 5'11 sophomore. Here's Jens. Out to Blank. Blank being guarded by Gall, he almost lost it. Actually, he tried to save it and threw it back in, but right to Logan Branch. And now Gall going to go baseline against Mendoza. Shoots over the rim. No. Offensive board. And a foul from behind. They're going to get Jens trying to block Steinke. And Matt Steinke gets rewarded as he's going to go to the free throw line with 11 minutes and change left to go opening stanza of play. Jens, as I mentioned, with the foul there. Sports at dailydodge.com. If you want to send an email tonight as the first free throw is no good for Steinke, sports at dailydodge.com. Taylor Post just emailed us, says, let's go Beavers. Taylor, thank you very much. Always enjoy hearing from you. Sports at dailydodge.com. Another free throw, no good. Jens got the rebound. So he missed them both. And we've still got a three-point game after the two misses at the free throw line for Steinke. Mendoza at the center circle area. Now sidearms it to Jens in the lane, kicks it out. Deep three for EJ, in and out, it's no good. And a box out and rebound. That one is pulled down by Milton's Cohen Lewick, 6'1 junior that had come on. Lewick to the right corner, three balls on the way for Steinke, it's off the rim, no. Rebound is swatted out of bounds, I believe last touch by Mendoza. I was correct because Milton will keep possession. Still a one possession game. 11 to eight, Red Hawks with the lead and the Rock as they'll inbound on the baseline to my right, lob pass in, Logan Branch sends it right side. Steinke back to Branch. Up to Gall now, just inside the midcourt stripe. As he's guarded by Blank, driving down the lane. Wait a minute, before the shot, we've got a foul. There was contact before the shot. And the foul was on blank. Gall will inbound, and on the baseline, lob pass in taken by Steinke. 
Sends it back to Gall. He's going to go off a screen, drives inside the free line, puts on the brakes, pass down low, turnaround jumper. It's off the rim, no good. Everything but the finish. Steinke was wide open, and the, the ball just rolled off the rim. Unfriendly rim for Steinke. Call for three. Nope, he's not going to take a three. He's going to drive baseline, then sends it up top. Three ball on the way. Yes! That is Parker Blank with a trifecta. We are tied at 11. Timeout Milton. 9.51 to go first half. It's a 30-second timeout. We will keep it right here with this game now tied at 11 apiece. Well, the Beaver Dam Unified School District would like to thank parents and families for their active engagement in the education of their children. BDUSD staff are working hard to make the best of each and every opportunity they have to serve your children. Your partnership in that effort is critical to student success. The BD fam, better together. Mike Tronson inside the field house on a Friday night. We've got a good one brewing here with 9.51 to go. First half, it is Beaverdam 11, Milton 11. Beaverdam trying to stay unbeaten on the young season. Golden Beavers entering tonight 4-0 overall, 2-0 in Badger large play. Milton, 3-1 overall, entering tonight's play, 2-0 in the Badger Large. Red Hawks have it, chance to reclaim the lead on this possession with 9.45 and counting left until the horn. Good crowd on hand here tonight. It's, uh, I mentioned it's uh, youth night, but a lot of folks made the trip up Highway 26 from Milton. Good to see them here. Again, if you want to send us an email, if you couldn't make it, sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for, and I'll mention you. Beaver Dam here forcing Milton to be very patient offensively. There's a three ball. It's off the rim. No for Logan Branch. Offensive rebound. Braden Hill. Then he got stripped. Mendoza throws it ahead. Salatel. One-handed pass to Call in the center circle. Bounce pass now to Blank high on the left. He goes back to Call. Call directs traffic up near the uh, center line. 8.49 and counting left, first half. Tied at 11, Beaverdam and Milton. Call for three, top of the silo, money! JT Call with his first triple of the night. He's got six points. Beaverdam has the lead, 14 to 11. So Beaverdam right now on a 12-0 run to take the lead. They were down 11 to two. There's a steal. Gall got stripped. Call to a cutting Salatel. Layup with the right hand is good for EJ. In a 14 to nothing run by Beaverdam, they've got a five point lead, 16 to 11. There's another pass intercepted and stolen. Call throws it ahead. Salatel out to Call. Deep three. It's high off the rim, no, and it hit the top of the backboard. Hit that mechanism up there. That's out of bounds. Well, wow, after a slow start. After a slow start offensively, Beaverdam now, as I mentioned, in the midst of a 14-0 run, they turned an 11-2 deficit now into a 16-11 lead. 7.50 and counting left in the first half. Colin Branch, bounce pass left side. Aiden Gall inside the bubble. Elevates, shot is no good, but an offensive rebound as it's kept alive, and here's another three ball. That is good. Well, Aiden Gall missed the first time around, not that time, as it's 16 to 14. Milton back within two. Gall now, eight points in the game. Call, pass into the lane. Blank puts it up off the rim, no, but a foul. Parker Blank will step to the charity stripe. The foul was on Carson Lewick, 6'2 junior, who had checked in just a little while ago. And the first free throw is good for Blank. Also checking in just a little while ago was Renone Banushi, 6'2 inch senior for the Red Hawks. In for Beaver Dam, Jeff Freund, 6'1 junior. 
Second free throw, no good. Jens tried to get the rebound. It was actually tipped to Logan Branch, throws it ahead. His brother Colin to the corner, and that one was going out of bounds. Benushi tried to save it, could not. And so it's a turnover. Beaverdam will get it back. Seven minutes, 15 seconds left in the first half. Entertaining ball game here at the Fieldhouse. 17 to 14, Beaverdam with a three-point lead, and now they get the ball back. Good student sections here tonight, both of them for each side on their feet. As I mentioned, a lot of folks from Milton made the drive up. We got youth night here. This is what it's all about. High school basketball on a Friday night in a small town. That's, that's pretty cool. Good atmosphere. All right, here's Freund coming around to the near side. Gives it to Salatel on the left wing. He's guarded there by Benushi. Gets rid of it, up to Blank. Blank driving. Back now to Stoby. Spins, puts a shot up and scores. Parker Stoby with a little pirouette there. And he puts the shot up in the lane and scores. 19 to 14. Golden Beavers lead by five. Just under six and a half to play. Look out, collision as a pass was going back door. And the pass intended for Benushi. They're going to get... I believe Stoby, yes, they're going to get Stoby for a foul. He was trying to deny that pass. Boy, Tim Ladron's not happy. He's given the uh, one of the officials over there what for. He's not going to win the argument, though. Lob pass in, taken by Lewick. This is Carson Lewick. Over to the left side for Gall. Gall, hesitation move, goes baseline, spins, kicks it back up top. Here's a three ball at the top of the key. It is off the rim, no good for Benushi. Rebound, Stoby. Stoby ahead, through traffic. It was poked out of his hands from behind by a Red Hawks defender, so Beaverdam will keep possession with 6.10 to go in the first half. It must be, I'm guessing the uh, the, the theme over in the Beaverdam student section tonight is a, is a Hawaiian theme or, or maybe a beach theme. I see a lot of, of Hawaiian-type shirts out there. There's a turnover, back the other way comes Milton Gall. What a move by Gall, and it goes, oh my goodness. Aiden Gall with another one. He's got 10 points. 19 to 16. Milton closes the gap to within three. Stoby one hands went up. Off the back rim, no. And the defensive rebound pulled down by Carson Lewick. Here's Gall. One handing it back door. And the layup is good for Carson Lewick. Well, Gall with a nice assist and a nice backdoor pass to Carson Lewick, who lays it up and in. 19 to 18. We're down to a one point game now. Beaverdam's lead has been reduced to one, 526 and counting, left in the first half. Jens in trouble on the left side, kicks it out of the circle. That's Freund, he's going to go baseline, found a seam, in for the layup, he scores. Jeff Freund. And there was a little seam there, and he just took off. Right, nice strong move to the hole, it's 21 to 18, Beaverdam. Bob Pascal looking down low. Logan Branch back to Gall, three ball right corner, short, and plucking it out of midair was J.T. Gall. And the Beaverdam student section letting him hear about that one. 4.49 left until intermission. There's a ball stripped from Freund, and Gall's taking it back the other way. Here is Colin Branch, whipping it down low, wide open. For a moment was Carson Lewick, and tried a head and shoulder fake, but lost the ball, and then here comes Beaverdam, as Blank gets it across the timeline to call, and he'll send it right back to Blank. He's standing on that big B and D at the center of the floor. And this is Stoby. Over to Blank. Blank's on that high right side, driving against Gall. Gall stripped him. Back the other way, Aiden Gall. Gall going in for a lap, finishes with a left hand. He's got 14, or 12 points, I should say. And it's 21 to 20, so the Milton deficit is now down to one. 3.54 to go in the first half. Stoby to Blank, he's into the lane. Bounce says, back door, there's Jens, he missed the layup. Rebound out of bounds, Blank could not save it. Oh my gosh, that was a gorgeous pass to Blank on the back door. Just could not get the layup to go as it rattled off the rim. Subs coming in as we now have 3.45 left in the first half. Again, coming up at halftime, we'll, we'll watch a little bit of the uh, third grade 
Positively Hoopsters play on the big court. We'll put the camera on them for a little bit. As it's youth night once again. Last night the girls had youth night. The boys, their turn tonight. 324 and counting left in the first half. Milton now chance to reclaim the lead. Gall elevates. 15-footer is short, and the rebound out of bounds. It will go back to Beaver Dam. So, Beaver Dam a chance to try and extend the lead a little bit. It's at one right now, 21 to 20. Ball knocked out of bounds by Benucci. So Blank's going to inbound right down below our vantage point here, standing on the near sideline. And he finds Stobie in the backcourt. He'll leisurely trot it across the timeline. Finds Salatel high on the right. EJ stops at the free throw line. Pull up jumper. Got it. EJ Salatel from the free throw line. Knocks it down 23 to 20. Still a one possession game. Beaver Dam's up three, 2.40 to go first half. Well, this so far has been an entertaining game as the ball is tipped out, deflected out by JT Call. Milton will keep possession. It's a big game for both sides here. Looking to stay unbeaten in conference play. Bounce pass in. Shot is up from the left side. Cohen Lewick. 23-22. Beaver Dam leads by one. Call for three at the other end. Splash! JT Call, his second triple. He now has nine points total. 26-22, BD by four. Two minutes and change left until the break. Gall dancing through traffic and traveled as he he ran into a lot of congestion on the interstate there. And as he tried to dance around it, he took an extra step. Earlier tonight in the JV game, Beaver Dam beat Milton 56 to 51. In the JV two game tonight, Milton was a winner, 45 to 31. So I guess you could call this the rubber match of the evening, this varsity game. Minute 46 and counting left in the first half. This is Parker Stoby between the circles, being hassled there by Lane Twist. Gives it to Jens, high on the right. Stops towards the free throw line, now gives it out to Call. Call, right of the circle, that pass goes to Salatel. And he tried to return feed to Call, but it was wide of Call, and it sailed into the Milton bench just over by head coach Ian Kirst. Minute 22 to go in the half, clock running. Off the turnover, it's Milton basketball and they trail 26-22. This is Gall, left side to the top of the key. Here's a three ball, well short for Benucci. And the rebound, last touch, they say, by Lane Twist. He was trying to grab an offensive rebound, and he was trying to tiptoe the baseline at the same time. He ran out of real estate. There were defenders there, too. 62 seconds left in the half, and Beaverdam trying to get it in, and they're going to have to call a timeout. As Stobie was back there, like, hey, somebody come back. i got to get the ball in. And So Beaverdam calling a timeout, 32nd timeout with... 102 left to play in the first half. Let's check some emails here. This one says, enjoying the game. Such great energy and a shout out to JT Call. Good luck, fellas. That's from Diane Storhoff. Diane, checking in from Sun Prairie tonight. Thank you very much, Diane. Great to hear from you. Brett and Jody Recheck enjoying the game tonight from the Lodge. Go Beavers. Thank you, sponsors. Shop local and support them. Brett and Jody, nice to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for your email, for your friendship. Happy holidays to you and your family. Again, if you'd like to check in, we want to hear from you. Sports at DailyDodge.com. 
send us an email tonight, sports at dailydodge.com. I'll be happy to mention you during the broadcast here. Under a minute to play first half. Beaverdam off the timeout. Stoby across the timeline, bounce pass. Mendoza free throw line left side. Back to Stoby, looking to Jens now up near the center circle. Sends it over to the left wing. Stoby going into the corner, step back three. Yes! Parker Stoby with a triple. 29-22. Beaverdam leads by seven. Half a minute to go until intermission. Gall directing traffic up top. Left side dish to the corner. They go towards the block. Kick back out of there. Goal for three. It's an air ball out of bounds. With 19.7 seconds to play in the half, Beaverdam will get it right back. Well, he averages 28 points a game, but he is human. He misses once in a while. But Beaverdam, I imagine will hold for the last shot here. Up seven. And now just 12 seconds left. Eight seconds and counting. Five seconds. Call inside the free line. Out to Salatel for three on the right side. Off the rim, no. Ball out of bounds. Off of Beaverdam with .8 seconds left in the half. So Milton will inbound and the half will essentially be over as Gall takes it, fires it the length of the court. It hits the top of the backboard. It's no good. So that's the end of the first half of play. At the break, it is Beaverdam 29 and Milton 22. Stay with us. We'll take a four-minute break. We're back for our halftime report in four minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaverdam. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. Is selling your home like a walk in the park? If you were in Central Park at 2 a.m., maybe. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. When it is time to sell, be it due to loss or love, growth or downsizing, staying near or going far, there are three basic steps. List it, sell it, move on. The steps are made simple by working with a trusted real estate advisor. Our family team is with you every step of the way, making those three steps as smooth and fun as possible. Kladowski Real Estate. We look forward to serving you. At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. There's something we live out. Core value number two is the wow experience. This means that from the moment you walk in the door until the time you leave, we want to provide an experience for our patients that is unlike anything you've had before. There are lots of choices of dentists, and we never want anyone to feel they have to be here. We want them to choose to be here because they feel heard, welcomed, and well cared for. If you want to see what the wow experience is about, call or text Preferred Dental Partners today. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Cheer! Now, cheer louder! Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. 
For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623 5559. The teams at Beaverdam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. Join the growing team at Beaverdam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. Air Care's total care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. Air Care, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Halftime here inside the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse. At the break in this Badger Large Conference Varsity Boys Basketball game, Beaverdam leads Milton 29 to 22. And for those of you that are watching this game on Daily Dodge TV right now, you are looking live at the Positively Hoops third graders. As I mentioned, it's youth night here at the Fieldhouse. And right now, the uh, youngsters out there, the third graders, playing in front of this nice crowd and during halftime of the JV game the fourth graders played and now it's the third graders turn after the game they'll get a chance to uh, get some autographs from the high school players and visit with them a little bit tonight's game brought to you by our presenting video sponsors hometown glass and improvement Columbus family dental and the Beaver Dam Unified School District tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Fladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Beaverdam Tire and Service, and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaverdam, and White Construction. Well, the Beaver Dam Unified School District identifies a school of the month during the school year. A shout out to the students, staff, and families of this month's school community being recognized, Washington Elementary. As you watch the Positively Hoops third graders going at it right now, let's give you the scoring summary from the first half of the varsity game. For Beaver Dam, they were paced by JT Call. He had nine points, including a pair of triples. E.J. Salatel had one three-pointer and seven points total for the Golden Beavers. Parker Stoby with five, including one from downtown. Parker Blank had four, including one from downtown. Two points for Jeff Freund and another two for Cam Mendoza. On the Milton side, Aiden Gall leads all scorers in the game. The phenom from... Uh, Milton with 12 points in the first half. Again, he averages close to 30 a game. and So he's uh, not quite halfway there, but he's got 12 at the break. Still leads all scorers in the game. Logan Branch, a pair of triples. He's got six points tonight. Two points for Carson Lewick and another two for his brother Cohen Lewick. Let's take a two-minute break. We're going to take a two-minute break back after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. 
Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. Halftime here inside the field house. Mike Tronson with you. 29-22, Beaverdam leads Milton. And a nice round of applause for the third graders that uh, just played on the big court. And now a little presentation here for the 10,000 Shots Club. We, we saw this last night, too. They honored some athletes who are part of this it's called the 10,000 Shots Club. As a matter of fact, I was trying to get a little more information on it. And as I look at the, uh, the sheet that I was given here, it says, each summer, the Beaver Dam Positively Hoops organizes a 10,000 Shot Club as a source of motivation and accountability to keep players fine-tuning their basketball shot during the offseason. This year, there were 26 players that completed the challenge of taking and recording at least 10,000 shots. And they're going to recognize those uh, folks here. Well, they were supposed to, but the band is playing. So I, uh, I see Brett uh, I see Brett over there at the table, our PA announcer, and uh, he's going to wait. They're going to have to get the band, uh, wait till the band is done. But uh, they're going to announce those players that uh, competed in that challenge the 10,000 shots club well we wait for that I did get a couple of emails that came across here so let's get to some more emails we've got uh, one here this one says uh, proud aunt of JT cheering from Nina let's go beavers it says well thank you for checking in and then this one is from Kendra go Red Hawks come back strong after the half Kendra from Springfield, Illinois. Thank you very much for the email. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. Here's that presentation for the 10,000 Shots Club. This year, there were 20 players that completed the challenge of taking and recording at least 10,000 shots. Please join these 14 boys tonight and congratulate them on joining the 2023 10,000 Shot Club. Cooper Fletcher. Easton Sommel, Ian Bristol, Carson Myers, Charlie Schultz, Caleb Alvin, Ben Alvin, Kevin Ryan, Abe Wilkie, Landon Lysis, Matthew Hargall, and a special shout out to our top three shooters, Cole Hemling, Paxton Lysis, and Wesley Muncher. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our 10,000 Shot Club. There you have it. The uh Youngsters inter introduced or recognized for being part of that 10,000 Shots Club. Let's take a one-minute break. A one-minute break back for the second half after this, 1430 ESPN and DailyDodge.com. At Summit Ford Beaver Dam, we are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. 
Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest refinancing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Just about ready to start the second half. For those of you listening on radio, in the second half, Milton goes right to left as I see it. Beaverdam left to right across your radio dial. 29-22. Beaverdam leads Milton as we start the second half. Golden Beaver is going to inbound to get this second half underway. Again, send us an email if you'd like during the second half. Sports at dailydodge.com. If you'd like to check in, we'd love to hear from you. We started this game a little late tonight. The JV game was also late in starting. Milton had a little issue with uh, getting a bus, and uh, but it was only a few minutes, so no major delay, and we've got basketball for you as we continue on. JT call, left baseline. Banks went off the window to get the second half underway. He's in double digits now with 11 points, and the lead is now 31-22. A nine-point Beaverdam advantage, opening minute of play, second half. Gall, double team down low. They kick it back up top and then right back to Gall in the corner. Draws another double team. Throws it up high on the right. Touch pass down to the baseline. Working into the lane and Stoby intercepted a pass intended for lane twist. They called actually a foul it looks like on twist. Which would be his third, team's first of the half. And Beaver Dam's going to get the ball. A nice job by Stoby to jump in there. Beaverdam now up nine. Beaverdam was down by nine early in the game. There have been some runs by both sides. Now Beaverdam is up by nine. And really, Beaverdam with that slow offensive start. But here's call for three. Got it! JT with the tray. 34-22, largest lead of the night for either side. Beaverdam's up a dozen with one minute gone by second half. But you know, Beaverdam really, when they when they started to get it going, it's because they picked up the defensive intensity. There's a shot, hit the underside of the rim. Jens couldn't secure the rebound off the miss by Twist. Now Gall, left side, high off the glass, that won't go. Still scrambling for the rebound. Steinke had it momentarily, lost it, ball's loose, and we've got a whistle as it was picked up by Stoby. He was off to the races, but a whistle blew. Steinke picked up a foul, that's why they blew the whistle. But yeah, Tim Ladron, I, he mentioned it in his pregame chat. He's you know been very, very happy with Beaverdam's defensive intensity through the first couple of games of the year. And they started picking up the intensity after that slow start, forced some turnovers that led to offense. And here's Mr. Offense himself, JT Call. Off to a good start in this second half. Now Jen, stop at the key, driving into the lane. Jens puts on the brakes, up and under, one-handed shot, won't go. Rebound, Gall. Aiden Gall, lob pass intended for Steinke, intercepted by Stoby. And Stoby was being hassled from behind and it caused a travel. So Milton will get it back. Not quite two minutes gone here in the second half. 12-point Beaverdam lead, but a long way to go. Milton very capable of getting back in this one in a hurry. This is Logan Branch. To Gall, right back to Branch. Ball fake to the free throw line, puts on the brace. One hands it out, right corner. Gall for three. In and out, it's no good. Rebound, offensive board, put back. That won't go for Twist. But Lane Twist is fouled, and uh, Lane Twist with those colorful tennis shoes, for those of you watching on Daily Dodge TV. He's gonna go to the free throw line. Well, you got a lot of guys out there with some, you know, some neon pink, hot pink shoes. 
Lane Twist, I think, has the best shoes of all. Here is the first free throw, and it's up, and it's good. What'd you say there, uh, Ninja? That's uh, He's got about every color in the spectrum somewhere on those shoes. I see blue, I see pink, I see orange, green, yellow. It's like a, it's like a box of cereal. <laughs> like a box of Twix or Lucky Charms or something like that. Your second free throw is good. I love the shoes. I have to get me a pair. All right, 34-24, so it's a 10-point game now. 15.45 left in this one. Mendoza looking down low. Jens on the right block. Gets it out to Salatel. Now up to Mendoza. Right back to the right side. Beyond the arc is Salatel. Up to call near the center circle. He's directing traffic there. Flips it off to Cam. And Cameron Mendoza. Will drive. Gives it off to a cutting Jens. Through a seam. Right side in for the layup. Jack Jens. Had room. There was a seam. 36-24 Beaver Dam. Pass down low, they kick it out. Back the other way, left side. Now here is Twist on the left side for three. Yes! Twist has all five points in the half for Milton. 36-27, Red Hawks within nine. 14-49 to go in the game. And a whistle. Check it out here. No foul on number one. Correction, number zero, Colin Branch. Colin Branch picked up the foul. And call with a lob pass in. Mendoza has it. Gives it to Stobie. Parker Stobie, bounce pass, call right corner. Calls all over him. Man-to-man -man defense, Milton. Jens, look out, we have a, an offensive foul on Jens as he knocked over Colin Branch. So that Beaverdam turnover will give it to Milton. Got another email to get, uh, get to. It says, uh, go Red Hawks, supporting my favorite Lewick boys. Thank you very much for the email. Nice to hear from some Milton fans. Again, if you want to check in, sports at dailydodge.com. Let me know who your favorite player or players are. Give me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for, turnover. Beaver Dam back the other way. Sports at DailyDodge.com. And Branch just knocked it out of the hands of Call back the other way. Logan Branch beats the defense back for a layup. 36-29. It's now a seven-point Beaver Dam lead. Clock running. We are now four minutes into the second half. What did I say when Beaver Dam was up? Double digits, I said it's not over, is it? And it's not. Right back to a seven-point game. You got to keep your foot on the gas all the time when you play either of these teams, really. But if you're Beaver Dam, I'm sure Tim Ladron said, yeah, we got to keep our foot on the gas. Mendoza, drive, missed the layup left side, rebound for Twist. Gall to the right corner. Logan Branch, pass into the lane. And a head and shoulder fake. Layup is no good, but Carson Lewick is fouled. He went down, and he was just a little slow to get up. He's all right, though. I, oh, wait a minute. Now he's he is a little slow to get up. Let's check him out here. Okay, Lewick is actually still down. And so we have a stoppage with 13.25 to go on that. Let's hope he's all right. He tried to get up. He got about maybe halfway, got to his knees, and then all of a sudden that didn't look so good. So we have a stoppage as they tend to the injured player. 13.25 to go in the half. Again, a reminder that we've got Beaver Dam boys basketball next Tuesday night on the radio as the Golden Beavers head to Wanakee to take on the Warriors. We are not allowed to video stream at Wanakee, so that means it'll be a radio-only broadcast Tuesday night, 7 o'clock pregame, 7.15 for the tip-off on 14.30 ESPN Beaver Dam. So join us for that if you can't make it out to want a key um, Monday night here on Daily Dodge TV we've got Marquezan and Randolph basketball boys hoops 7 o'clock pregame 7.15 for the tip Corey Sparks will have the play by play of that game Monday night and then next Tuesday there's also a hockey game on Daily Dodge TV the Beaverdam boys hockey team will host Milton on Tuesday night 
That game will be broadcast on Daily Dodge TV, and the uh, pregame show starts at 6.45. The puck drops at 7. They are still tending to the injured player with 13.25 left in that. We're going to step aside. Let's take a one-minute break. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 14.30 ESPN Beaver Dam. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. 15% off the most awarded SUV ever, the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee and Grand Cherokee L at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dan. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and this deal is so good, I've got to say it again. 15% off brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees during the Black Friday sales event. That's over $10,000 in savings on select models. This is going to be a Black Friday like no other. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. We're still in an injury timeout with 13.25 to go second half. Right now it's Beaverdam on top of Milton by the score of 36 to 29. I mentioned uh, before the break that Beaverdam's next game is Tuesday night at Wanakee. Next week, Thursday, December 14th, the uh, Golden Beavers have a road game, a non-conference affair at Milwaukee Vincent. That's scheduled for a 7 o'clock start. And then on Friday night, December 22nd, last game before Christmas, uh, the Golden Beavers will host DeForest here in the Fieldhouse. That'll be uh, two weeks from tonight, 7:15. The scheduled tip for that. You know, I, I talked about it a little bit uh, earlier on with Coach Ladrin, but tonight starts a, a tough, tough four-game stretch for the Golden Beavers heading into the Christmas uh, break. You know, you get Milton tonight, Wanakee next Tuesday. Milwaukee, Vincent, and then DeForest. That's a tough stretch. And so, you know, no, no disrespect to the opponents they've already played, but that's going to be a tough stretch. And they finally helped up the injured player. Oh, let's hope he's all right. That's, uh, you never want to see that. Never want to see that. And so they've uh, got him over at the bench area now. Coach uh, Ian Kirst over there and training staff over there. And uh, hats off to all those folks that uh, are here to make sure that these uh, kids get the attention they need if, if something like that happens. Carson Lewick back at the bench now and now standing up. That's a good sign. Free throw right now for, this is Nick Herbst. Six foot five inch senior came on. And gets another free throw. He got one of two to make it uh, 36 to 30. Beaverdam still up by a half dozen. Here's Cole with a drive, right side. He puts it up off the glass. 38 to 30, eight point Beaverdam lead. We're just about five minutes into the second half. And a pass up for. Threw up a prayer, uh, did Colin Branch as he was trapped in the corner and trying not to fall out of bounds. Got it to a teammate, but he couldn't score near the right doorstep, and Beaver Dam's going to get it back after all that. So let's hope that, uh, again, Carson Lewick is okay. They uh, got him to the bench, then he, he walked under his own power over towards the locker room. So... I guess, if anything, that's a good sign that he was walking under his own power. There's a floater up in for Stoby. 40 to 30, so Beaverdam's got the lead back to 10. 12 37 left to go in the ballgame. Logan Branch giving it to Gall. He fires it cross court. Kicked out of there by Benucci, and then a bad pass stolen. 
Call back the other way, right hand finishes. Layup for JT Call. He's up to 18 points and a timeout, Milton. With 12.14 to go in the ball game. A full timeout called by the Red Hawks as it's now 42 to 30 in favor of the Golden Beavers. Got another email here. And this one says, go Red Hawks. And cheering for the Branch Boys. That's from Grandma Branch checking in tonight. Well, thank you, Grandma. Nice to hear from you. Happy holidays to you and your entire family. Glad you're tuned in tonight. Again, if you'd like to check in, sports at dailydodge.com. That's where you can uh, find us. And as we've been doing each and every broadcast, we'll be happy to give you that shout out. 12 point Beaver Dam lead. I mentioned uh, Beaver Dam's upcoming games. Milton, they will have a home game next Tuesday against Monona Grove. And then next week, Thursday, they have a non-conference game at home against Wauwatosa West. They also play on the road at Lakeside Lutheran and at Watertown the week prior to Christmas. Looking at uh, Milton's schedule, they've only had one home game so far. And there's only there's, there's two home games, as I mentioned, next week, but they've been road warriors for the most part. 1-3-1 zone, Beaver Dam. Been employing that here in this one. Been working pretty good for him. Just under 12 minutes left in the half. And a shot is up, no good. Salatel rebounds the miss by Cohen Lewick, the 6'2 junior. And wait a minute. We've got a foul apparently on the Golden Beavers. The Beaver Dam fans aren't thrilled with it. The Milton fans approve. It's just a matter of who you ask. Milton's going to keep it, and they're going to inbound as Gall finds Lane Twist up to Logan Branch. Underhanded pass, Benushi. Giving it now to Gall. Gall driving right side through traffic, and he puts it up and in. Aiden Gall, 14 points in the game, 42-32. Milton back within 10, plenty of time here, 11 and a half minutes to go in this one. Both these teams want this game badly. This conference is so competitive. There's a ball knocked into the backcourt and hustling for it. Goal along with Stoby, or not Blank I should say, and they both went after it. They blew the whistle, what do we got? I think they got, they got Gall. Yeah, they did for a foul going after that. This is a big hustle by both him and Blank. And I don't think Ian Kirst was real thrilled with that call. Oh, and now an over and back on Blank off the inbounds play. Well, I for the Milton fans who didn't like that last call, I guess they're they're going to be happy now. They get the ball back. And a chance to cut the deficit down to single digits. Just over 11 minutes left in the ball game. 42 to 32. Golden Beavers lead the Red Hawks. Branch double team. Left side, pass high on the left for Twist. Twist. Over to the right side. Deep three. Logan Branch, it's off the rim. No, and we're going the other way. Bounce pass in to Stoby. Just under 11 minutes left in the game. 42 to 32. Here is a three ball from the left corner. In and out, no good, Stoby. Jens the offensive rebound. Sends it out to call near the timeline for a reload. Now Stoby over on the far side by his own bench. Giving it now to JT Call high on the right. Takes off, call. And before he could put a shot up, there's a foul. 
Aiden Gall with the foul, and that is his second. That is the fifth team foul, and there's a layup. No good for Jens. Offensive board, blank, puts it up off the glass. That won't go. And Gall has the defensive carom. Back out to Twist. Logan Branch, left side pass into the corner for Gall. Gall guarded there by Stoby. He's into the lane, sends it up top. Ball fake, Branch at the free throw line. Falling down, but he gets saved it to a teammate. Now Gall takes it on the far side. Long cross-court pass. Twist, gets two defenders in the air, passes up a shot, and gives it to Logan Branch. Now Gall. Against that 1-3-1, one, one, elevates, shot is up, and he he got it. Aiden Gall making that tough shot look easy. 42-34, Milton's within eight. 9.37 to go, second half. You know, these two teams last year in Milton played a wild overtime game. Blank with a layup on the right side. Last year on February 13th, they played down in Milton, the game went to overtime. Wild game, Beaverdam won at 55-52. Now it's 44-34, Beaverdam in this one with 9.17 to go. Yeah, these teams, uh, they, they battle. These two teams battle. It's fun to watch. Both these teams off to great starts, as we mentioned. Both these teams... Figure to win a lot of games this year. Never easy in the Badger large, but these teams are showing that they can they can play with anybody. And Beaver Dam really has shown that for a lot of years. Gall trying to go back door, and the pass was tipped and stolen. JT Call the other way, right side blank on the wing for three. Bullseye. Parker Blank, his second three. He's got nine, timeout, Milton. 8.53 to go in the ball game. It's 47-34 in favor of Beaver Dam. Let's take a one minute break. We're back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 14.30 ESPN Beaver Dam. In today's financial markets, you will find all your needs met at Park Village Shopping Center. Time is right for a home equity line of credit. The folks at Horicon Bank can make those home remodel dreams a reality. Searching for sound financial advice? Kevin Smith of Edward Jones will help you make sense of your investments. Kevin knows the market inside and out. Nightberry Title meets all your title needs, from commercial to residential. The team at Nightberry is your partner for success. This is why you hear people say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center. You should too. Park Village Shopping Center. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. I just got another email. My brother-in-law, Bruce Kaufman, checking in. He says he's driving home from Marquezan after officiating the Randolph-Marquezan girls game. Bruce, drive safely. Thanks for checking in. And it's back to live action here inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. 47-34, Beaverdam leads. Milton with possession off the timeout. Logan Branch for three. Missed it short. Rebound knocked around, ricocheted like a pinball. Gall picked it up then. He tried to go up and lost it out of bounds. And Beaverdam will get it back. 8.31 remaining in this game. And this is JT Call in the backcourt. Threw it into blank. Gave it right back to JT. He'll bring it across the timeline. Throws it across actually to Salatel. Back to Call. Near side, going baseline. One-handed shot, it's off the rim, no. Mendoza, the offensive board, missed the putback. Rebound for Banushi. Here comes Twist to the baseline. Gall down there, double teamed. He's in trouble, trying to go, oh, back door, and look out, big collision. As JT Call went down as he was trying to deny that pass to Twist. Twist went down as well, but JT Call picks up the foul. His second, team sixth. 
Gall on the baseline to my left. He will inbound. Lob pass in, taken by Lane Twist. Twist. You know, Ninja, I just figured it out. Maybe they could, maybe his name is Twist. That's why he's got the, the shoes he does, because they're kind of a, you know, all, all those colors are kind of twisted together on his shoes. Maybe that's why he wears those. Anyways, here's Gall. Driving, missed the underhanded shot. Call the rebound. Everything but the finish for Aiden Gall. 7.40 and counting left in this entertaining game. Ball knocked out of the hands of Jens. He's got to get it across. Yeah, and well, they called timeout, did Tim Ladron, because he was flirting with a 10 count. Let's take a one-minute break. Another one-minute break back after this. 14.30 ESPN Beaver Dam and Daily Dodge TV. Is selling your home like a walk in the park? If you were in Central Park at 2 a.m., maybe. Chris Kledowski, Kledowski Real Estate. When it is time to sell, be it due to loss or love, growth or downsizing, staying near or going far, there are three basic steps. List it, sell it, move on. The steps are made simple by working with a trusted real estate advisor. Our family team is with you every step of the way, making those three steps as smooth and fun as possible. Kladowski Real Estate, we look forward to serving you. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their Spirit Pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Got another email to get to here. It says, a shout out to Coach Ian Kirst from Milton High School. Go Redhawks. And the email says he's a Beaverdam graduate and his parents were Beaverdam educators, which makes it even more special that these two teams play each other. Yeah, we were talking about that. Thanks for the email, by the way. That person wanted to remain anonymous. But yeah, I was talking about that as Salatel elevates missed a shot and a rebound pulled down by Gall. I was talking about that during the uh, beginning of the broadcast tonight, how Ian Kirst, yeah, there's a steal. Back the other way, blank. Two on one developing. Blank, left side, layup. No good off the rim. Jen's offensive board and a putback. But I said, you know, Ian Kirst, 2001 graduate from BDHS. He, he played basketball uh, under Dan Hallman. And also, I believe he played one season for uh, head coach Dean Vellante when, he, when Dean was here. Here's a tip ball by Jen, stolen by Mendoza ahead. Blank. And... Uh, He's been, of course, Ian has been. There's a nice backdoor pass, blank shot. No, but a foul. Oh, an offensive foul. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, it's going to go the other way. But, uh, you know, this is uh, Ian Kirsty's been with the, the Milton program as an assistant for the last, what, 16, 17 years. And so taking over the program really wasn't a stretch for him because these kids knew him, he knew them. It was not like coming in from, you know, somewhere outside of Milton and having to, uh, you know, learn everybody and get to know people and all that. It was, you know, I'm sure a much easier transition in that regard, but nice to see him get a chance to lead the program after being, you know, an assistant for so long. And he and I were chatting before the game, and I mentioned, I said, you know, he was he was playing ball here at Beaverdam High School. There's a stolen uh, inbounds pass. JT call in for a layup, finishes with a right hand. He was playing ball right around my early years here at the, the Beaverdam radio station. His goal goes in. Count the layup and a foul. He's going to go to the line and shoot one. 51-36 is the score. Beaverdam on top. But I didn't get a chance to watch him play that much back in the day because back in those days, uh, our re friend and uh, retired colleague John Kraft was announcing a lot of the Beaverdam basketball games, and I was over doing Area teams, Randolph, Columbus, Marshall, Marcusan, you name it, free throws up and good. So I didn't see as many Beaverdam games back in those days. Gall now is up to 19 points, by the way. 51-37, Beaverdam leads 6.15 to go. Here's a turnover. Throwing ahead, 2-0, on oh, Gall, easy layup with the right hand. 51-39, the Beaverdam lead is at 12. Ahead, Mendoza, layup. In transition, beat the defense back, took the outlet feed, and scores. And boy, we're high flying now, just back and forth, end-to-end -end action. 53-39, there's a 
pass to the baseline intended for Twist. It was knocked out of bounds by a Beaver Dam defender. But, uh, yeah, very, very nice to see uh, Ian Kirst, you know, a homecoming for him tonight. Of course, he didn't play in this facility. This, this field house did not exist back in those days in the late 90s, early 2000s, but he played in that old North Gym, which he and I were, you know, remarking had its charm back in the day, but we're fortunate to have this. Long three from the parking lot. It's no good for Colin Branch, and on the rebound, Mendoza grabbed it. We had a foul called. And Braden Hill of Milton called for the, the contact, and we're going to the other end. Wait a minute, that's only the sixth, right? So she, yeah, we're going. It's not going to be free throws because they, they started walking to the other end like it was going to be a bonus. It's not a bonus yet. Beaver Dam with eight fouls in the half, but Milton that was their sixth. Five forty to go. Beaver Dam trying to hang on. Milton trying to rally late. 5.35 to go. 53-39 Golden Beavers lead the Red Hawks. This is JT Call giving it to Mendoza. Now playing catch as Call takes it back. Fires it left corner. Salatel baseline drive. Layup. Got it. Defense just did, didn't, didn't just get there. and It's uh, Salatel scoring. He's got nine. 55-39 Golden Beavers. Just over five minutes left. Twist for three, it's on the way, high off the rim, no. Mendoza leaps to get the defensive rebound. And there's a pass intended for Blank, went into the Beaverdam bench and out of bounds. That turnover will give it back to the Red Hawks. Speaking of coaches with area ties, I was talking about Ian Kirst. There's a shot up one-handed. No good for Colin Branch, but he got fouled, knocked down, and he'll get helped up by his teammate Lane Twist. But, uh, you know, Ian Kirst, a Beaver Dam alum, now coaching Milton. Former Randolph standout, Tyler Selk, is co the coach of Wanakee, and we'll see the Wanakee Warriors taking on Beaver Dam in Wanakee next Tuesday night. First free throws up, and it's good for Colin Branch. Tyler Selk taking over the Wanakee program this year. and That's a name that folks in Randolph will not soon forget. They remember that one along with many others. Second free throw is no good. Rebound is going to be grabbed by Salatel. EJ gives it to JT. 436 and counting left in the game. 15-point Beaverdam lead, 55-40. Jens fouled as he was driving along that far sideline over by the Beaverdam bench. Beaverdam working left to right as I see it in the second half. And Jack Jens, JJ, will head to the charity stripe after the foul. And he misses the front end of the bonus. Lane twists the rebound. Benushi picked up that last foul, by the way. Seventh team foul of the half. That's why he shot the bonus. All right, here's a long three from the parking lot. High off the rim, no good for Branch. Logan Branch missed. Colin Branch the rebound, then he got knocked down and fouled. And so the foul here is the fourth on Mendoza. That's now, that's going to put uh, Milton in the double bonus. They're going to shoot two the rest of the way as we have four minutes and change left to go. First free throws up and good for Colin Branch. Parker Stoby just checked back on for head coach Tim Ladron and Beaver Dam. Second free throw good. Colin Branch got them both. 55-42 Golden Beavers lead. Clock is running with exactly four minutes to go in the game. Salatel, three-point land left side. Down to blank on the baseline. 
Back up to EJ, inside the free line, whips it right side. Jen's touch pass, kicked out by Stoby To call, back to Stoby right of the circle. Now finds Jens, a little give and go. Stoby takes the return feed, they go to the left corner. There's Salatel, one handing it up top for call. He's double teamed and fouled. With 3.39 to go. Colin Branch picked up the foul. These two teams will rematch in Milton on February 6th. I told you what happened last year down there when they played. and Game went to overtime. and See what happens, but we got to finish this one up first. Call got the free throw to go. He gets another one. Big night for Call. Big second half. He's got 12 in the half, 9 in the first half, 21, and now 22. As that free throw is good. 57 42, Beaver Dam leads by 15, and we've got three and a half minutes to play. Goal for three. Arking's shot is no good. Benucci, the offensive board, out to the top of the key. Another three ball. That's no good for Twist. Rebound knocked around. Thrown ahead by Stoby to cutting. Salatel goes in for a layup. Stoby with a helper. Salatel the bucket. 59 42, Beaver Dam, 3 10 and counting. And now Cole knocks a pass loose underneath the basket, and we've got a foul, I believe, on Milton. As it's gotten, the, the physicality's really picked up here in the second half of this one. And Parker Stoby finds himself at the free throw line with 3.08 to go. Just waiting to get personnel set here. Both student sections still on their feet. They haven't sat down the entire night. Who needs the bleachers? Free throw front end of the bonus is no good for Stobie, but the rebound grabbed eventually by Jens after it was knocked around. Beaverdam's got it, a reload, and Blank was kind of driving around just running some clock, and there was a foul called on the Red Hawks with exactly three minutes to go. Colin Branch just picked up his third. Both teams now are in the double bonus. Parker Blank at the line. He's been really good at the line this year, 85.7%. Been averaging about eight points a game, and he knocks that one down. He's got 10 points in the game tonight with one more free throw pending. Next one, yes. Timeout, three minutes to go in the ball game. And Beaverdam now ahead 61 to 42. It's a 30 second timeout. And uh, we'll keep it right here during this 30 second timeout. Well, staff and students of the Beaverdam Unified School District value our community and know that giving back matters. All of our schools are actively engaged with the community and our staff and students provide thousands of hours in community service each year. From staff and students at our elementary schools to clubs, organizations, and teams at our middle and high schools, we are learning together and giving back together because it's the right thing to do. Jack Wilski back at the 1430 ESPN Beaverdam Studios is our radio engineer tonight. On site, my videographer and video engineer is... Ninja, a.k.a. Justin Wilski, and he's assisted by Ember and Toast. My name is Mike Tronson. On behalf of the entire crew, thanks for tuning in tonight. Three minutes to go, 61-42, Beaverdam up by 19, Milton basketball. There's a baseline drive, shot is up, no, but a foul. It may take a while to play this final 253 at the rate we're going. Parker Blank just picked up a foul. Again, both teams going to shoot two the rest of the way. A 
was the uh, third personal on blank. First free throw, no good. Off the back of the rim for Twist. One more for the 6-2 senior Lane Twist. Missed that short. Call tipped the rebound to blank. 2.48 and counting left in the game. Beaverdam ahead by 19. 61-42. Here's Salatil whipping it right side for Jens. And there's a foul on Twist. So more free throws. For Twist, that was his fourth. Jack Jens. He goes to the line. Jens, about 70% from the line this season, and he calmly knocks down the first of two. Jens averaging 9.8 a ball game. Five rebounds, a couple of assists per game. He scored 14 the other, the other day in that win at Cudahy. Second one is good. 63-42. Beaver Dam by 21 with two and a half to play. Twist couldn't handle a pass intended for him over in that far corner. And it goes out of bounds. Turnover will give it back, back the to the Golden Beavers. Well, I tell you, it was a bit of a slow start for Beaver Dam tonight, but once they kicked up that defensive intensity, they got the offense going because of it. There's a tip ball stolen. Back the other way. This is Logan Branch. And they kick it back out. Here's a three from three-quarter court almost. Offensive board put back. They get it to Twist for the layup. Twist got the bucket, the uh, assist from Jackson Widener. 6'5 sophomore. And at the other end, Parker Blank just laid one up and in. 65-44, here's another shot at the other end, high off the rim, it's gonna go for Twist. Uh, it's just a free for all right now at each end. 65-46 with a buck 47 left. And Logan Branch just knocked the ball out of the hands of Blank and out of bounds, Beaver Dam should retain possession. Well, I tell you what, I don't, I, I figured Beaver Dam had, you know, obviously was capable of winning this game I don't know if I expected a blowout on this order because Milton is just that good. I mean, they're really good. Here is Salatel in for the layup, finishes with a left hand. We talked about how quick they are, how athletic they, they are. Aiden Gall's been lighting it up, and among others. Here's a three ball for Twist, missed it from the corner, call the rebound. But uh, this is impressive for Beaver Dam, and now a timeout, Tim Ladron with a minute 26 left to play. It's 67 to 46. Beaver Dam in front and it's a 30 second timeout. And we will keep it right here. Stay tuned for our post game show coming up after the conclusion of our game. We'll give you some final numbers. We'll get uh, Tim Ladron up here for a post game interview. Speaking of uh, Tim Ladron, let's go Beaver Dam. This email just came in from somebody very near and dear to Tim Ladron. His daughter, Maddie. Checking in, Maddie Ladrin with an email says, let's go Beaver Dam, and thank you very much, Maddie. I hope you're doing well. And here is a three ball, no good for the Golden Beavers. That was launched by Matt Doyle, 5'11 junior out there. Beaver Dam's pretty much emptied the bench at this point. Now goal for three, got knocked down, no call. He missed the three ball, it's out of bounds. On the floor for Beaver Dam, Jackson Ladrin, the coach's son. 5'11 freshman came on. So did Matt Doyle, as I mentioned. Let's see who else is out there. Riley Doyle, 5'11 junior. Max Lidke, 6'3 junior. And Nick Krasinski, 5'11 sophomore all out there. Nick Herps, 6'5 senior out there for Milton. Jackson Widener is out there, 6'5 sophomore. We try to get all the names mentioned as much as we can. 49 seconds left. Three ball, no good for Ladron. And we've got a whistle. Ball, 
Joey Ashmore. 6'1", seniors out there for Milton. Cohen Lewick. Riley Doyle picked up a foul with 45.2 seconds left. And that first free throw is up and it is good. One more free throw and that one is no good. That was uh, Braden Hakes that was shooting that free throw, by the way, not uh, Lewick, as I think I had mentioned. Got one of two, 67-47. There's a shot off the glass, no good for Krasinski. Here comes Milton, and a shot off the glass. It won't go in and out for Widener. 20 seconds left as we finish this one out. Three ball left corner, yes! Nick Krasinski with a triple. 70 to 47, Beaver Dam, eight seconds left. Here's a drive and don't count the bucket. There was a whistle. Krasinski picked up a foul. Cohen Lewick is at the line this time. Missed the first free throw. 6.1 to play. Beaver Dam's going to stay unbeaten on the year. And like I said, this second free throw is no good. Rebound for Krasinski. How, how impressive is this one over this really good Milton team? And the horn sounds. This one's in the books. Final score tonight inside the field house. Beaver Dam, 70. Milton, 47. Golden Beavers now 5-0 and 3-0 in the Badger Large. Milton drops to 3-2 on the year and 2-1 and in conference play. All right, as I said, stay tuned. We've got our post-game show coming up. We're going to give you the final scoring summary. We'll have head coach Tim Ladron up here. Let's take a four-minute break. We're back in four minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Cheer. Now cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. The teams at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. Join the growing team at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. Air Care's total care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. Air Care, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Year after year, McKinstry's. 
At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. There's something we live out. Core value number two is the wow experience. This means that from the moment you walk in the door until the time you leave, we want to provide an experience for our patients that is unlike anything you've had before. There are lots of choices of dentists, and we never want anyone to feel they have to be here. We want them to choose to be here because they feel heard, welcomed, and well cared for. If you want to see what the wow experience is about, call or text Preferred Dental Partners today. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show. Welcome back inside the high school field house here in Beaver Dam. Mike Tronson with you for Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. I am joined on the post game show by the head coach of the Beaver Dam boys basketball team, Tim Ladron. And Tim, congratulations on the win. This one's got to feel really good. You started a little bit slow offensively, but I noticed that as soon as you started cranking up that defensive intensity, you started forcing turnovers. That led to the offense to get going, and it was uh, a solid effort the rest of the way. Yeah, you know, um, you know I thought you know, they got out to that big run. I think it was 11-2 to start it. We called a timeout just to kind of – I think we needed – we weren't great defensively, but we also needed to settle down in the offensive. I think guys are jacked up, you know. Um, you know, a big game at home, youth night, big crowd. Uh, guys are fired up. They get a little maybe too amped up early in the game. Just had to settle down a little bit. And we came back, and, and I think we tied it back up at 11 when they called their timeout. And, and it just settled everybody down. And, and um, I told you, like, we, we've got a lot of experience and a lot of guys that have been around the block, and, and um, it certainly helped us tonight. You know, and you just alluded to something, and that it's something we don't talk about very much. But I'll, I'll ask you anyways maybe to expand on it, and that is you said, you know, maybe we were a little – uh, too jacked up. Is is there such a thing as being too amped up going into a game? I, I think mean, there, really? I think there is on the offensive end. Yeah. Um, you know, you get a little a little bit too juiced and your shots go long. I think JT had that open three in the corner to start it and he airballed it long. I think it's just kind of fired up. You know, you it, you're, it's youth night. You know, so this is one of those games for our kids that they get really jacked up for. They love having the, the young guys in here, um, and you know, so I there's all that extra juice to it. You know, so um, it just well, again, once we settle down, guys are just taking the shots that, that they're comfortable taking and, and let the game come to them, and it, everything kind of settled down. Yeah, on the defensive side, I thought you really settled in as the game went on, and looks like you did some nice things with that 1-3-1 uh, you had going there. Yeah, it's kind of been a bread and butter for us this year, and, and you know, I didn't I didn't think we would play it as much tonight, um, but our guys are really our guy our guys are really comfortable in it. Um, they, they just have a flow to it. They, they, they know where each other's going to be. They, they read each other well. And, and to be honest with you, I thought we'd rebounded out of it better than we did in the man, you know. So um, they, sometimes it just becomes what you're comfortable with. And, um, you know, we talked about it in the locker room at halftime. You guys want to stay in it? And they're like, yeah, they want to stay in it. So, you know, and they're the ones playing the game. If they're comfortable in it, let's stay with it. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I mentioned uh, during the uh, second half, I said, I'm sure that one thing you, you talk about is, especially with a team as talented as Milton, is, okay, we have a lead. Keep your foot on the gas, though, because that, as they show, they're capable of getting right back into it. Yeah, and I, you know, and that's the nice thing about this group is I don't, you know, and I'm saying it, obviously, but I don't really have to because they're telling each other, okay. you know, and they're telling each other in timeouts, they're telling each other at halftime, you know, they're leading it. I've said it all, and you hear you hear the cliche all the time, and I tell it to our guys all the time. The best teams are the one when the players lead, 
and these guys, our players lead. Our seniors, JT, Jack, and Cam have been such good leaders for us, and they've really grabbed a hold of this team, and everybody's bought into it, and um, you know, and it shows on the floor. You know, we've got, um, you know, we really only kind of went six deep tonight, and Jeffrey got a few minutes there, but really only went, but you can see our bench. Everybody makes a play. Everybody's up. They're after it. You know, everybody's, we talk about pulling on the same side of the rope, and uh, everybody's doing that right now, and that starts with those three seniors. You and I talked about this, I think, uh, last time around, uh, that fact that I commented that, you know, your guys are very unselfish, and watching them, you just get the sense, Tim, I mean, you don't have to be a basketball expert. I'm no expert. But just you get the sense that they're all on the same page right now, that they really are, like you said, they bought in, that they they just have a – they just know what, what everybody else is going to do, where everybody else is on the court, and they're just they're, they're just locked in right they now. They really do. And, and you know, one of, one of the best things about this is, is, as a coach is when somebody starts rolling, like JT got rolling there mid-game, and then he hit the first two shots in the second half. And so we're getting to a timeout, and we're calling a, we're calling a, a set – and, you know, and JT's one of the top options in it, and everybody's shaking their head. Yes, that's what we're doing. Yeah. You know, the guys that are backside guys or their screen guys or whatever it is, they're all on board. You know, they're not like, no, it's my turn to get a shot, coach. You know, they just don't, just, we don't do that in this. And the great teams have that, and, um, you know, and that's a big reason why we're playing pretty good basketball right now. You mentioned the uh, great atmosphere here tonight, not only because of the matchup, but youth night, and I'm looking out there right now, and you're, uh, you know, your kids are down there. They've been signing some autographs for the uh, youngsters that played at yep. halftime of the varsity and the JV games. Yep. And much like, uh, you know, what the girls do, uh, same thing here on the boys' side. How important is this for basketball in general and Beaver Dam and for these youngsters? Because, you know, these youngsters, I'm sure, look up so much to these high school kids. Yeah. And, you know, they want to be they want to be them someday. Well, our youth program, Positively Hoops, is the heart and soul of our program. It really is. The, the, player, the, the youngsters... The parents, the families that are involved, the ones that coach, the ones that bring their kids to, you know, to tournaments all over the place or practices twice a week. That's the heart and soul of our program. You know, you don't have a good youth program. You just don't have much. And our youth program has been awesome. It's just, um, you know, I think it's one of the top youth programs in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we've done, a, you know, our, and our, our, our board and our everybody else does such a good job in, of, helping us along like tonight I didn't really have to do much tonight uh, you know our board took care of it and and so then putting that night together and having these youngsters out here watching us and you know they were jacked up for the JV game you can hear them screaming and yelling they got to watch a great JV game and then to see us come out and play well against a really good team tonight it, it, it says a lot you know for those guys and, and for the, those youngsters and hopefully you know they hopefully they go to practice next week you know, with that same energy that JT, Jack, Cameron, EJ, Parker, Park, all those guys that, that they all play with. And hopefully they, they learn something from that and, and, they, and they're and they able to build their game as well. Well, this was an impressive display, no doubt. Uh, I, I remarked at the uh, towards the end of the game, I said, I expected, you know, that Beaver Dam would be fully capable of winning this game. I don't know that I expected no. the blowout. I mean, no. that says a lot. I mean, this is a really good Milton team. Let's yeah. not forget that. We, we've talked about it all night long how talented they are, how athletic they are, how quick they are. They've got scores on this team. And you guys you guys did a nice job. You held Aiden Gall under his season average. <laughs> now, he had 21. <laughs> I get that. That's crazy. But he, he averages 28. Yeah. Nobody else was in double yeah. figures. That That's a really good job defensively. Yeah, you know, you're right. They're, I mean, they have, they, have, they have a win over to Forest, who's a really good team with great size, traditional great program. A win over Oregon, who is one of the top picks in the league this year. Uh, you know, they're coming in 2-0 and with two huge wins. And, you know, I'll be honest, we weren't quite sure where we were yet. And, and we, there's a long way to go. There's no question. Um, but certainly, you know, proud of our guys. And, and nobody thought this would be the score. And I didn't feel like it was very comfortable ever. They, they just didn't feel that way. You knew they were capable of making a run at any time. They're super talented. They, you know, they fly around. You know, they, they you know, they, and you can see they rebound really well. Like they, they beat us up on the glass a little bit tonight, and um, but we we were able to hold our own and then you know pull away. And um, yeah, I, there, I didn't, I no chance. I thought that I, you know, it's like anybody else, it's dog fight the whole way. It's dog fight the whole way anyway. But um, yeah, nobody thought what the score would be this way. Well, again, congratulations to you and the boys. It was an impressive display. 
Uh, nice way to kick off this stretch here before Christmas. And uh, I'll be following you over to uh, Wanakee on Tuesday. There's another tough one right there. I mean, uh, you just, you know, the, the, just check another one off the list here. But uh, looking forward to uh, joining you in Wanakee for a big game on Tuesday. Yeah, it doesn't get any easier. I mean, they're super talented, well coached, um, great size, strength, you know, um, in their gym. And, you know, I'm sure they're going to be very, very ready for us, especially after tonight's game. So, um, yeah, we're going to be ready to go, but, we'll, you know, our, I know our guys will compete. Well, Tim, I appreciate you coming up here. I'll let you go back and, and enjoy this one with your team. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for all you do for us. And, by the way, your daughter Maddie says hello. Yeah, I, uh, uh, hi, Maddie. <laughs> I know she's still listening. And uh, love you, Maddie. And, uh, you know, and um, I get to see her soon. It's over Christmas break. I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, you enjoy this one, and we'll see you Tuesday. All yeah, right. thanks, Mike. Appreciate you it. Bet. Thank you. All right, that's Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam, joining us on the postgame show. Beaver Dam a winner tonight over Milton here in the Fieldhouse, 70-47. to 47. Let's run down the final scoring numbers from this one. Now, these are unofficial, but, uh, again, I think they're pretty accurate for the most part. Uh, for Beaver Dam, they were paced by J.T. Call. He had a game-high 22 points. He led all scorers tonight, 13 coming in the second half. And uh, he had, amongst that, three three-point baskets. Also in double figures, E.J. Salatel with 13, including one from downtown. Parker Blank had 13, including a pair of triples in this game. Seven points for Parker Stobie, one from behind the arc. Jack Jen, six points, all coming in the second half. Cameron Mendoza was good for four. Three points for Nick Krasinski, had a triple late in the game. And Jeff Freund chipped in two points to round out the scoring for the Golden Beavers. Meanwhile, for Milton, the Red Hawks were paced by the aforementioned Aiden Gall. 21 points for him, 12 in the first half, nine more in the second. Lane Twist, all nine of his points came in the second half. He had a, a three-pointer amongst those. Uh, let's see, it was eight points for Logan Branch. A pair of threes in the first half, two more in the second. Three points for Colin Branch. He had a three free throws in the Second half tonight, two points for Carson Lewick, another two for Cohen Lewick. Nick Herbst and Braden Hakes with each with a free throw to finish with one. With the win, Beaver Dam now still undefeated, 5-0 and overall and 3-0 and in league play. Milton drops to 3-2 and overall, 2-1 and in conference play. Milton's next game is next Tuesday night at home against Monona Grove. They have a non-conference home game next Thursday against Wauwatosa West. But again, join us Tuesday night here on, well actually, Tuesday night is gonna be a radio only broadcast when Beaver Dam goes to Wanakee to take on the Warriors. Again, Wanakee has their own video streaming service so they respectfully ask us not to video stream there. So we're gonna have that one on radio for you Tuesday night. I'll be there for the play-by-play, 7.15 tip-off, pregame show at seven o'clock. If you can't make it, join us for what should be another great game and that's going to uh, pretty much wrap things up here from the BDHS Fieldhouse I want to thank all of our sponsors once again that made this broadcast possible our presenting video sponsors hometown glass and improvement Columbus family dental and the Beaver Dam Unified School District tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's home furnishings Kladowski real estate slumberland silica for your home summit Ford Beaver Dam tire and service and Mayville tire and service Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaver Dam, and White Construction. Big win again for Beaver Dam as they knock off Milton 70 to 47 here inside the field house, and that's going to wrap it up. Want to thank all of you for being with us. Thanks to those who uh, were nice enough to email us during the game. Jack, back at the 1430 ESPN Studios. Thank you, Jack, for engineering our radio simulcast. And to Ninja, Ember, Toast, love you guys. Thanks for all you do here on the video side inside the Fieldhouse. For the entire Wilski crew, my name is Mike Tronson saying so long from the Fieldhouse. Have a pleasant evening and enjoy your weekend. This has been a Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam Sports presentation. Good night. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show.